The beautiful fall colors of Simcoe County draw thousands of visitors every year. Each Thanksgiving weekend, it is also home to the Images Studio Tour, one of Ontario's finest and longest running juried art events. For the diverse group of outstanding artists on the tour, this is an important opportunity to showcase their work in their own studios and introduce themselves to a new audience. Here are just some of the artists we followed as they prepared for this unique studio tour. Jimmy McKee, an illustrator, sculptor, and imagineer. Like car, paint, you can see steampunk. I was at the start of steampunk. What is steampunk? What is, what's A quick definition is the machine age, art deco, futurism, and jam it all together and take anything that's really old and uh, mix it. I've always called myself an Imagineer, and so it sort of fits into being creative in a new sense every year. Images has, has been a great show. It, it, uh, it gathers a lot of the really unique Simcoe County people that are involved in everything from sculpting to illustration. And they've all got these wonderful old galleries. So for Thanksgiving, you get a little of um, their creativity plus the places that they're living in, which you never get to see normally. And so it, it's kind of fun. A lot of the people come out just for the Thanksgiving weekend to do the tour just to see the unique Simcoe County real estate, I guess is what you'd call it. I've probably been with Images for 15 years, I guess, a long time. And what I try and do every year is reinvent myself. So it was steampunk two years ago. Last year I did an Art Deco series. Um, this year I'm just creating a new series and it's going to be a, a lot of Atherley. Aurelia, early times, turn of the century. I've been involved with uh, totemic art, mainly Quakutal, British Columbia, for probably 25 years. And so uh, there are still dregs of that in the house. You're, you're standing actually beside a totem pole that was carved 20 years ago for Havergal College in Toronto. That was a, an eight foot model. And so I still use. Um, the West Coast art theme mixed in with, with the art. See, there's a sailfish I did this year and I, I put a um, Canada goose on it. Uh, these are two birds that I've just got ready for the show as well. A Canada goose you can see flying around his neck. And it's a merganser, a hooded merganser. And this is a a pintail with a butterfly on its back. And the whole problem with art is when you open a can of art, you can't close it. And so consequently, I can't sleep. There used to be blank spots when I was younger, but now there's no blank spots anymore. It's just crammed with too much thinking and very little time to finish the work. I mean, I'm in my 70s. And so um, I'm not doing myself any favors because I get like three to five hours sleep a night. And I think that's true with all the creators of art. It, uh, when you open that, that whole thought process up of creating, as you get older, you're in trouble. You're just way too busy mentally, and you, there's no way to turn it off. There's no... Welcome to the boardroom. Here you are at McKee's Dine and Ditch. And if you look at the table, you'll see this is 
fine fly fishing. This is ready for the show and uh, it was going to be a harvest table and I thought, no, I'll make it into a boardroom table with a pike on it and uh, it'll be a, a different piece for the show. And then what I thought I'd do is show you a piece of art that I'm just finishing up and uh, we can go to that. So I thought I would do a few pieces of steampunk for the show. And this is a steampunk musician uh, playing a Gibson Flying V bullseye guitar done sort of in a cubism pattern. And I'm just framing it right now in steampunk gears. I have a pile to choose from. A little stupidity. I thought that might end up going there. That's basically where it's going to go. I have thousands and thousands of pieces here, as you can see, to sort of work with. And I just keep trying different stuff and to see if it'll work. I mean, all these drawers are all filled with steampunk stuff. You can see it everywhere here turn-of-the-century electrical items. They just make a great Art Deco steampunk piece. Lenses, telephones, uh, musical instruments I make guns out of. Steampunk guns, they're just ultra stupid. So it's, it's just try, and if it works, fine. If it doesn't work, take it off, try something new again. So you get a little bit of, of unique art. If, if you don't have junk, you can't make art in the steampunk theme. It's eight, 1890 and the floors really? are nailed to stumps. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. It's a <laughs> McKee's dump in the woods is what it is. This is uh, the inspection angel, God's right-hand assistant, with her device in her arms to make sure you're worthy to go to the promised land. Oh. Kathy bought the Havergal totem pole from me. Oh, so cool. it's, it, it hasn't been for sale. It's been here all these years, and she was the right person at the right time. Mm -hmm. So, and I didn't even charge her much for it. I just, <laughs> I just wanted it to go to the right person. Well, that's really it was lovely. The, um, the work is so unique. The colors are very bold and bright. Yes. Um, and Jimmy was great to talk to, and he has a story for for much of his art, and when he tells you the story, it really brings it to life, so certainly well worth the visit. On the top is a woman astronaut with feathers on her arms. The hands mean don't listen to anybody, you'll make it to the top. Mm -hmm. Followed by a woman doctor for equal rights to women. Followed by nurturing women protecting three nationalities of children followed by a pressed woman in a veil with the balance of justice for the future. So Mrs. Ditchburn said, it's perfect. That's just what we want. Actually, I'd never met her before, and I told her the history of the Havergal totem pole that was done um, for a girl who died of leukemia, who was the president of the student council. And she had knowledge of the school, and she absolutely had to have the pole. And I, I hadn't had it for sale. It's been in the house for quite a few years because I really liked it. It's my, one of my favorite pieces of art. But she was the right person with the right attitude. And I didn't even charge her a lot of money for it. It was just the right thing to do and we all felt good about it. So I really like it. I've never <laughs> met her before, but. 
Uh, the weather was terrific. The people were really, really interested. The quality of people was very good. Finding people that really are interested in art, that aren't wasting your time. They're, you can tell by looking in their face when you're discussing a piece of insanity and they really like it. That's what's really important to an artist. It's nice to put a few dollars in the bank, but over and above that, it's wonderful for an artist to be appreciated. The expensive pieces, people were very, uh, they kept their wallets closed, but uh, the people that really wanted a piece of art made the show worthwhile, and so I did pretty good.